flesh-eating, gut-munching, garden-variety zombies. No matter how many times you kill them, they keep coming back for more, don't you? More than any other master, George A. Romero used these flesh eaters as the genesis for bringing horror closer to home and gave it a face we all recognize, ourselves. Well, I grew up on EC comic books. And, uh, and actually, when I was first of an age to be allowed to go to movies alone, the Universal monsters were all in re-release, so I got to see Frank and Drac and those cats big screen as a kid. I can't even imagine that I that I created, you know, a creature of any kind. I, I don't see it that way. They were, they're, they're zombies. They just happen to, you know, be white. They don't work in a cotton plantation. They're blue collar monsters. George Romero was a big influence on me because of, I think, Night of the Living Dead. Uh, that was a transforming film. Like Psycho, I think, Chain is the beginning of the modern horror movie. Up to then, you had universal horrors and you had a lot of uh, Hammer movies, but Psycho came along and Bango. Uh, everything changed. And then George transformed it once again in 1968-69 with Night of the Living Dead. That was an amazing film. He invented a whole world. <laughs> Originally, uh, we set out to make this a very high-minded, almost Bergman-esque kind of film, which was not my vote, but this was a de democracy. But we, we could never sell tickets to that movie, I mean, to investors who would actually pony up a few bucks. So we decided to do a horror thing. I always wanted to do it. And then, then of course, after Night of the Living Dead became Night of the Living Dead, uh, I fled. You know, I said, oh, man, I'm going to get stuck here. And... Um, even though I love it, I didn't want to be stuck there. So the next couple of things I did were not, you know, all the way f flat out uh, horror things. The second one was a romantic comedy. Romero, most of the time, is doing social commentary, you know, and uh, I think his not, not Living Dead movies are fantastic commentaries about society. All right, Vince, hit him in the head, right between the eyes. With the original night, it was late sixties, we were all involved in you know, the in social criticism of one kind or another. And uh, so I think those attitudes all crept in. I mean, we lived in that farmhouse. We, all, we would hang around at night. It definitely crept in. And we talked a lot about what, what does this represent and, and the fact that it was a purely an accident that the lead role was cast um, with a black actor who happened to be a friend of ours who was the best actor available to us. That gave it some power, which, you know, it didn't go unrecognized by us, but we were out to make a horror movie. I think, you know, probably the first story that ever told was a scary story. And um, so often they're parables and they have deeper meanings and, you know, and so we were somewhat aware of it in the first film. In, the, in, in Dawn of the Dead and Day of the Dead, it was much more conscious and therefore I think is much less innocent. <laughs> It's that lack of innocence, I think, that, that, if anything, bothers me about, about those films. You know, once you're aware of it, it's pretty hard to, to put it in the back of your mind and, and work, work the story solely for its own.
on Reanimator, uh, you know, George Romero zombies are like, you know, this is sort of the, you know, he he, he is the, you know, the guy who put, you know, kind of established what is it, how a zombie behaves. You know, you can't think of zombies without thinking of George Romero zombies. day that everybody in the world wanted to be zombies and the dean of the fine arts department at Carnegie Mellon University is the zombie there with his wife he's the fisherman zombie you know people just all want to be zombies and they all want to have the most grotesque makeup and they want to be chewed up if possible and uh, it's a riot <laughs> the Saturn Award for Day of the Dead. That's the only award I've ever won for special effects because of the realism of it. I didn't feel a need to top with each film, top the last one with the gore. We had, we were better able <laughs> to execute the stuff. Tom had learned and the cats knew how to do it. They'd mixed up some blood that looked a little more real. <laughs> can't get any better than the real thing. All the intestines were real because you can't get any better than the real thing, you know? I think we were all learning and, you know, gradually we're able to improve the effects. Tom came up with some really ingenious effects in Day. God, there's so much in Day of the Dead. That was a heavy effects film. We, we shot, killed, squibbed, tore heads off, you know, crushed heads with two befores. Left to my own devices, I probably, I mean, if it was totally a decision based entirely on aesthetics, I might have not, I might have gone less, particularly in, in day. But uh, I had this vague notion that it was like a wake up call. People are running from the theater, and those of us, like you and I, who are diehards, are sitting there giggling, wanting more. Do it to me! So <laughs> I love George's dead movies. And he struggles with how the Hollywood system, doesn't trust it, and hates it. And I, I feel bad, because I was the one who encouraged him to come here. I said, yeah, they're not so bad. He came here and I said, yes, they are. Well, I think a lot of people don't get what I do sometimes. Uh, I don't know that it's a misinterpretation. Because they're, they're looking at it, you know, a, 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 a distribution executive is going to look at a film with completely different eyes than, you know, than a member of the audience or than you or I or a filmmaker particularly. You know, they're looking for, you know, they want to watch the movie and be able to imagine the poster instantly in their minds. And if they can't see the poster, you know, then how am I going to sell this piece? <laughs> And uh, that's happened to me a lot. <laughs> when I was trying to pitch the, the, the new zombie film, they said, what's it about? And I went in and I, I would say, well, it's about ignoring the problem. And they would say, yeah, but I mean, who, who, what's the story? What are the characters? And I'd say, well, you can do it 50 different ways, you know. They don't want to hear that. And it's a, basically, it's about ignoring the problem, which I don't know that anybody is doing after September 11th. We're starting to ignore the problem again. I had this conceit that the first one was 60s, next one was 70s, next one was 80s, and I wanted to do one for the 90s. And really, the script that I wrote is more 90s than, um, you know, certainly pre-September 11. And um, so I feel I have time, you know, to absorb what the, uh, what the, the, uh, the new millennium brings us or the new decade brings. <laughs>